My first tip for drop shotting is the way you rig the soft bait onto the hook. So there's a variety of different ways you can rig soft baits onto a drop shot hook. The way I tend to rig them most of the time is by nose hooking the soft bait like I have here. So I basically push the point of the hook in about a quarter of an inch below the throat of the soft bait and then push the point of the hook out through the nose. So when I impart even the tiniest of twitches into the rod tip, it's going to give that soft bait the maximum amount of movement. Another way I like to rig soft baits as well is by rigging them wacky style, which is basically pushing the hook right through the middle of the body of the soft bait, almost just like hooking a lobworm through the middle of the body. And this works especially well with longer bodied soft baits, especially plastic worms. I still see a lot of people rigging soft baits onto a drop shot hook in the same way as they would do onto a jig head. And although this will work, you're not going to get the same amount of movement out of it as you will by nose hooking or rigging the soft bait wacky style. When it comes to drop weights, there are two main types that I like to use. So you've got ball weights, which are sort of cylindrical in shape, and then you've got pencil weights, which are much more streamlined. For most of my fishing, I prefer to use a ball weight because they're a lot more responsive. And when fishing over rocky, muddy, or silty bottom, you can feel a lot more what's going on with this kind of weight than you can with the pencil weight. Sometimes though, there are situations where pencil weight would be a better choice than a ball weight. So sometimes on small rivers and streams, I actually like to stalk fish with a drop shot rig. And that's where I prefer to use a pencil weight because a pencil weight will make much less splash than a bull weight because obviously it's more streamlined. I also prefer fishing a pencil weight when I'm fishing over a weedy bottom too because the pencil weight cuts through the weed a little bit easier than a bull weight and doesn't catch up as much. Generally, when I'm fishing on rivers, I like to have a distance between six to nine inches between the hook and the drop weight. Although sometimes that can be shorter and sometimes it can be longer as well. It just really depends on the conditions that you're fishing in and where the fish are sitting in the water column. Sometimes when I'm fishing on small streams and rivers and canals and the fishing's been really tough and the fish are proving lethargic, what I like to do is shorten the distance between the hook and the drop weight even more, sometimes to as short as two or three inches um, if the fish are sitting close to the bottom and sometimes that can help me catch a few more fish on a tough day. On the other hand, sometimes if I'm fishing big reservoirs or lakes and I'm fishing from a boat and I can see fish on the fish finder sitting quite a way off the bottom, sort of two, three, even four foot, that's when having a longer distance between the hook and the drop height can work really well. So sometimes, as I say, I have fished it as long as three or four foot. So really, the distance between your hook and your drop weight really depends on the type of venue that you're fishing. But generally, if you think your distance is too long from your hook to your drop weight, it's probably because it is. And that's when I'd shorten the distance, even just a couple of inches, and even a change just as small as that can make a lot of difference on a tough day's fishing. When it comes to hooks, it's always best to use a specially designed drop shot hook, as this will give your soft bait the very best presentation, and also, when you get a bite from a fish, it will give you the best chance of a good hook hold too. When you look at a drop shot hook up close, you'll notice that the hook point is turned outwards, and when you're tying a palomar knot or a drop shot knot, this is gonna help the hook stand upright, and when you have a bite, it's gonna give you a much greater chance of hooking into a fish. Now when I'm fishing, I always like to carry with me a variety of different size soft baits. So that's why I always carry a variety of different size hooks too. It's interesting because different manufacturers' hook sizes come up slightly differently to each other. But generally, for using the Fox Rage drop shot hooks, for a size one, that's when I'd use soft baits over three inches, so between three and four inches in length. For a size two, that's when I'd use sort of between two and a half to three and a half inches. For size four, that's when I'd use a, a soft bait around the two inch mark. And then for size six and smaller, that's when I'd use some of the tiny soft baits in the Fox Rage range. I know some people like to use an extra wide gape hook for drop shotting, so that's the same kind of hook that 
you'd use for Texas or Carolina rigging. Now I don't tend to do much of this because I think you get a better hook rate when you're using a normal drop shot hook and also I don't tend to drop shot when I'm fishing really weedy venues, that's when I would use a weedless setup instead. The great thing about a drop shot rig is that it can be fished from both the bank and the boat with great success. And depending on where I'm fishing from, there's a few different ways I like to fish a drop shot rig. I suppose the most common way you see people fishing a drop shot rig is by casting out letting the drop weight fall to the bottom, keeping the rod tip up at about a 10 o'clock angle, and then just imparting tiny little movements into the rod tip and crawling the drop weight along the bottom until it gets back to the boat or back to the bank, wherever you're fishing from. Now that's often a great method and a brilliant way of fishing it, but sometimes that's actually too much movement and the fish want it fished a lot slower. Often just dragging the drop weight along the bottom will make the soft bait look enticing enough to a fish as it bumps along little nooks and crannies, rocks, boulders, gravel. One thing that makes a drop shot rig really unique to other lure fishing tactics is that you can actually just cast the rig out and fish it static. So if there's an overhanging tree on the other side of the river, a bridge, or if I'm fishing from a boat and I can see fish on the fish finder right below me, I can simply just drop the rig down or cast to that overhanging bush or structure on the other side of the river and literally just hold the rod without moving the soft bait at all. It's not exactly the most active way of lure fishing and it can require quite a lot of patience too, but sometimes it can really pay off. You can also fish the drop shot rig in a similar way when vertical fishing from a boat. And sometimes it's really exciting because if you're fishing your drop shot rig next to the fish finder, and you're looking at the screen, you can actually sometimes see the fish come up to your lure and take it, and that can be really exciting to watch at times. So don't just stick to one retrieve when fishing the drop shot rig. I like to be open-minded and try a few different retrieves, fishing it static, just dragging it along the bottom, and imparting twitches into the rod tip too, and just see what works best on the day.